My name is Kaisa Parding. I'm a PhD student in meteorology. And I'm Sandhya Tiwari, and I'm a PhD student in computational biology um, at the Molecular Biology Institute. Well, we met uh, for dinner or coffee, um, I think it was sometime October last year. And uh, Kaisa was like in her final months of her PhD contract. And I was at the time when I was writing one of my manuscripts and we both had a conversation about how we had a lot of trouble writing in general. And that was a big reason why we couldn't finish our PhDs, I guess. Um, and instead of just uh, complaining about our situation, I remembered that um, uh, when I did my internship in uh, Cambridge, in England, um, there used to be um, a student uh, group which would get together, and they called it a writing club. And I remember they would advertise that they, w they, they used to meet for an hour a week and critique each other's writing. And I turned to Kaisa and I was like, you know, we could do something like that to just get started. We've evolved from uh, like meeting once in a while and just sitting next to each other uh, writing uh, to being more of a support group uh, talking about the writing process, reading each other's text. Um, yeah, so it's, um, we're more active now. Like we um, uh, actually use each other in a more um, efficient way. Yeah. The length of the text that we read from each other, it really depends on um, what we're working on. And we're both working on article manuscripts. So uh, in the beginning, it was more about looking at various sections, like the introduction. Uh, but now that, for example, Kaisa is closer to finishing her entire manuscript, it can be up to 10 pages. It depends on what kind of feedback we want as well and where we are with the writing. Yeah, if you, if you give someone, a, if, you, if I give Sandhya a 10-page manuscript, I expect uh, the feedback to be more like um, about the structure of the text and uh, uh, about the like overall um, uh, f how how the text flows. Uh, but if I give her like a one-page uh, text, I uh, require some more detailed feedback. Mm -hmm. I think the answer would be that the text doesn't have to be completely ready and perfect. Um, in the beginning, we were actually not sharing at all because I think we both had this idea that it had to be uh, you know, almost complete and almost ready for um, you know, even submission or whatever. Um, but after a point, I think we were both quite stuck. And uh, it turned out really well, actually, because... When we read each other's very unfinished text, um, we could realize that uh, there was a lot that needed to be done to complete the sections. And so when I first gave Kaisa my text and when she um, gave me hers, it was very much uh, bullet points in an order that were not even paragraphs um, and some incomplete sentences that we still even had to make sense of. And I think you can already gain a lot from that um, even if you don't, you get any useful feedback and you start to understand how complete something needs to be before it can be um, analyzed and critiqued um, by someone else. So I think it's really important to, to just start reading each other's work, even if it's not perfect. Often we'll decide that we're going to share our texts in, you know, in three hours. And uh, then... Um, that the pressure of like knowing that you have this deadline uh, makes you work more, being more focused and uh, uh, and focus on making the text uh, readable rather than um, like uh, focusing on this like one detail or sentence. Um, because we're in two different fields. Um we often don't understand what's being written and what's being discussed in the text uh, to any expert detail or whatever. Um, but there's a lot of overlap in terms of methodology 
like statistical analysis and just general concepts of what should go into a scientific text. So I think when we read each other's text, we can almost replace some words and try to make sense of it um, in a way that we can understand what the structure and the logic is and the flow is. So when we, when we read each other's text, we're looking for consistency in logic, consistency in language, um, and, a, and a structure that follows, um, um, follows the aim of the text. Um, so sometimes um, uh, it can be a good thing that uh, Sandhya is not in my field because she represents a reader uh, with little prior knowledge about the topic. And uh, if I uh, make assumptions about certain things being common knowledge, uh, she can point out that, no, I actually explicitly have to state um, certain things. Yeah. I think there are benefits and there are drawbacks. Um, the benefit is that we are less likely to judge each other's work in terms of its quality and merit. Um, so it's really much more about the writing process, and I think that's why we wanted to do this. Um, but sometimes the drawback is that, of course, you want the high-quality feedback that you get from your colleagues and your peers who work in the same field and can actually maybe give you more feedback in a session than you. But at this point in time, I think just the company of someone working with you in the same situation I think there's a lot in common that we have just as PhD students trying to write manuscripts. So, yeah. so in the beginning, uh, it might be more useful that I um, say that like this part is working and this is not, and this is a problem with the structure. And then at a, at a later <coughs> time, when the text is uh, actually has a, has a nice structure and is more readable, then I can just go for the little things. I think uh, sometimes I feel personally, when I have nothing useful to add to Kaisa's text, I give her language feedback <laughs> and suggest different words for the same thing or whatever. But Good feedback is feedback that goes beyond good and bad, that is uh, more um, uh, descriptive and... Uh, uh, maybe suggests um, how something is uh, bad or how it could be better. And good feedback um, almost inspires you to keep writing, actually. Like, if you have something good in a text, it's important to say that something is good in the text and not just nitpick on small details. And um, Yeah, so... and. Good feedback is also, yeah, like she said, uh, explicit with, with what it is that is working and what is not working. And bad feedback is when you say you don't like it and you don't really explain why. Or, or you say you like it and you don't explain that either. Yeah. You, that doesn't really get you anywhere. It can yeah. make you happy, but it doesn't help. <laughs> yeah. Now we meet almost every day <laughs> including weekends but yeah. in the beginning we were meeting once a week and then it went up to tw twice and I think because we have deadlines um, we are working every day for many hours so during the day I'll be in my office Sandra's in hers and then Sandra's office mates leave and I come and we hang out all evening in my office I, I, we've played around, well, I've tried to invite people, and sometimes we've had uh, one other person, and I think three is still okay. But I think uh, keeping a group very small, um, given the format that we've chosen to work with, uh, is important. I think um, with the number of breaks that we take and the amount of distractions we cause for each other, and I think um, it only works when it's small. But... In general, I can see that if, if there were to be 5, 10, even 15 people, if we managed to get a space that large, then it'd have to be A, for a shorter period of time, and uh, B, much more um, rigid in the way that it has to be run. It has to be run like 
a workshop or a class where everybody has something prepared and starts sharing and you know get something good out of it in a short period of time so I think it really depends on your needs really and for us we were more interested in having someone to work with alongside us um, just to keep us motivated and seated in, in, a, in, in an office for long hours um, and then of course everything that comes with writing just evolves because we had an aim as well it was not just about socializing it's also about sharing this entire experience that is not very fun for either of us but we have to do it so yeah i think it's good to share a text with sandy first and figure out the um, language and structure and because then when i give a text to my supervisors they will focus on the content and because if you give a your supervisor a bad text they'll just like uh, give it back to you with a lot of red mark and uh, you know point out all the uh, all the spe spelling errors mm. and they should focus on um, the science. Yeah, I agree. Um, in my experience, when I've given an unfinished text to my supervisor, it's never been as helpful as it can be, and so um, and even to to get to the point where it's ready to be sent to my supervisor. It's nice to have Kaisa look at it first and have an idea that it's that can be understood at least and then send it off. So yeah, it's very different. Um, it hasn't happened with Kaisa, but it has happened with someone else who gave me a critique on something that I wrote. Uh, but so far we've 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 not really dug deep into the science of it or the content in, in that perspective. Uh, we've only stuck with structure, logic, and language. So it's, I think a lot of the feedback we give doesn't really harm a text in a way unless it's really changing the meaning. And I don't think we reach that level of critique. So, yeah. Because we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> it works well, I think, because uh, we actually work well together. Um, so if I'm uh, writing and I get tired and I look up and look at uh, Sandhya and she's working, that inspires me to keep working and uh, the other way around. And we're not afraid to tell each other, you know, stop watching YouTube videos, go back to work. <laughs> yes. And I think in the beginning that was... Um very critical because Kaisa would not be afraid to say, okay, stop Facebook, we have to do writing club. So in that sense, I think you need to have a certain comfort level. Um, but again, I think it depends on what you need. If you're, if you're ready to do writing club and you do writing club for one hour, then it doesn't matter. But if you are sitting there for five hours and you want to get work done, then you need to be firm. So, yeah. To start a writing group, you need uh, a writing partner. You need a space to work. Uh, and uh, like a text to work on. Yeah. And it, and it almost doesn't matter where you work. Um, we've, in the beginning, um, met at cafes, um, at each other's, well, at her home, at my office. So I think... Uh, it, what is important is that if you have an aim as to what you want to achieve in the session and if you have something that you're working on and you have someone to work with, then that's a writing club.